Hello everyone, my name is Pierre Charbonneau. Today's video will provide you with a troubleshooting guide for the very common Java problem, how the memory ever primed gen space. So I'm sure you have seen this problem before in your uh, current role, either as a Java programmer or maybe you're just using a Java program, right? Or even a game like Minecraft, for example, right? If you're hosting a server. Well, in this case, the uh, it's a very common problem. So what is the um, memory perm gen space? So essentially that indicates that your Java 1.7 or lower ran out of permanent generation memory, okay? It's a very specific problem. That's why I mentioned 1.7 because this error won't be seen on the uh, latest Java version 1.8 and higher, which we'll see next. It indicates actually that the Permanent space is depletion, not native memory, right? Not to be confused with uh, running out of physical RAM or even a Java heap itself. This is because the permanent space, right? It's a separate memory space which is used to store the Java program class metadata, right? So in your program, uh, mainly you're using a Java heap for the dynamic object allo allocation. And the permanent space is used for the class metadata, right? So if essentially if you have, let's say, 50 class objects, all the class metadata, right? The skeleton of your classes is kind of a static data, and it's and uh, it's getting stored on a permanent space, which, uh, which has a separate capacity versus a Java heap. Okay. Now the GDK8 plus they changed the approach. They are now uh, similar to let's say as you may have seen in the past, like IBM G9 or even uh, Oracle G G Rocket. They are essentially storing now that uh, memory uh, the directly to the native space. Okay, so that's why you will see different error, and we'll do that to um, we're actually going to review that through a separate video. Okay, but right now keep in mind indicates depletion of uh, as I said permanent space for your class metadata. Now symptoms, right? Well, typical symptom is a sudden failure of major slowness of your Java application or game, as I mentioned, and of course the error found will be the the one that you highlighted in red here. Add a error permanent space, very typical error. Now, another very common symptom is a high CPU utilization, right? You may wonder why. Well, it's because the permanent space, right? As I mentioned, the separate memory space, it's only getting collected during a major collection. So what's happening if the permanent is getting depleted? Well, Java, essentially a garbage collector, will try to collect it, right? Over and over and over to try to free up space. And of course, garbage co collector will be using threads to do that therefore we'll be utilizing your cpu so that's why the cpu will spike up when you're getting very close to other memory error and at some point you'll have to kill the java process or it will terminate by, by itself possible causes well the the most common by far that you will see just inadequate java perm gen capacity settings right so essentially if you're using the default setting is fairly low that will be even below 100 megs right depending if you're using 64 bit or 32 bit so it's always recommended to um to fine-tune the perm gen capacity, especially if you're using an enterprise type of Java application. So that's the most common cause. Other possible causes, there's also possible cause as a memory leak, right? So same type of leak you will have on a Java heap. You can also be dealing with class metadata memory leak, right? Let's say you're leaking class loader instances, or maybe you're leaking classes within a specific class loader, right? Because any class is not getting released. A very good example would be um, if you're using a middleware like Oracle WebLogic or even JBoss and you keep redeploying your application without restarting. Well, over time, uh, this can accumulate classes, right? Uh, instances, and then leak the perm gen. And then at some point, you're running out of perm gen space. Okay, so that's a, an example of memory leak in this case. Now, there's also another possibility that I've seen in the past in our experience with excessive dynamic class loading operation or concurrent load. Right? So, but that would be very specific. Let's say you're running a program, excessive creation, dynamic class loading, proxy classes, and everything. On the high load, it may can tax your perm gen up to a point that you're running out of perm gen, uh, which could be forcing you to have excessive size. So in this case, a recommended approach to re revisit definitely the, uh, the culprit creating all the dynamic classes right, through a profiling activity. Now the diagnostic tools, right? Next, how can you, what type of tools can you use to help you, right? Well, of course, Verbo GC logs, which we'll see next in our uh, demo. Verbo's class, which is very useful because the Verbo's class will keep track of the class creation, right? So if you're leaking classes, that one is very important because you're able to see the actual class getting created over time and which type of class. Java Visual VM, Oracle Machine Control, of course, out of the box, free tools, typical I use for monitoring purposes. They allow you to keep track of the permanent space over time. So very, very extremely useful. A more deep dive analysis you can do, you can use memory Eclipse Analyzer to keep them analysis, right? Because the 
even though the parameter is a separate memory space, if you're leaking memory, you will be able to see also in the heap dump some of the Java representation or some of the class loader and class instances. Okay, so that approach is very really useful for leak. And of course, typically PM technologies, there's quite a few out there. They will be useful overall to help you in the uh, monitoring and even some of the profiling activity as well. Now, possible solutions um, regarding the parameter and space, probably what you wanted to hear. Well, again, back to the most common issue, if you're using a default setting, make sure you can increase the max Java perm gen capacity. And the parameter, it's, it's called max perm size. Like in this example, I override the default with the 512 megabytes for the perm gen, which is very actually typical capacity for, uh, I would say, medium load level enterprise Java application with uh, multiple instances, right? So 5, 12 megabytes typically uh, is a, a good starting point. If you need more than that, like 1 gig plus, it means there's definitely some, something wrong. That you could be probably trying to deploy too many apps to a single JVM process, for example, but typical 512 is a good starting point. But more and more I'm seeing like close to 1 gig, but um, again, it's a good starting point. Point. Now make sure that you monitor and profile and resolve any application class not a memory leak. As I mentioned, even though you increase the capacity to 512, if you're dealing with a leak, it means day after day your perm gen will be growing. So please make sure that you can profile your app and resolve any potential class loader in memory leak. This is not a trivial task, however, but this is something very important. It's it, it that type of issue can actually arise not necessarily from your code, but also even third-party API that you could be using. And finally, the third solution will be, of course, if you're dealing with excessive class loading, make sure to optimize your code and identify the culprit, right? Piece of code in excessive class loading, you may have to revisit these third-party APIs and minimize the impact on the class loader, which can have performance issue by itself, and of course, keeping on in check your prime jet footprint, okay? Now we are going to simulate the problem. So for this purpose, what we did, we created a small Java program, as you can see here. This job program, essentially what it does, it's, um, it will load up um, a map, which I call a class leaking map, right? It's going to create a pretty much non-stop volume of proxy classes. Okay, now this is kind of a advanced concept here, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But essentially what we're simulating is the uh, class metadata memory leak via a simple program. Okay, so we're going to load up the perm gen space. Okay, so we can replicate the problem and then we'll explore monitoring uh, strategies as well. Okay, so let me start the program. So essentially the, the program itself will accumulate and to do that we actually loaded Java Visual VM, right, which was one of the recommended tool. Um, Java Visual VM is, is allowing you to monitor the, the heap and the permission space, right? And we can see the capacity right now, the perm gen that we set up is a one about 128 megs. And we can see the perm gen will grow right now in our program is growing over time. So even if I try to do a major collection, the perm gen is still growing, growing and growing, which is the purpose of this tool, right? Um, and th that's why Java Gem is very efficient, right? If you want to monitor the, uh, the perm gen utilization, you can use Java Visual VM for that purpose. So a leak of the metadata is exactly like this. See, regardless how many times the major collection will get kicked off automatically, or even if you try to explicitly trigger it, the perm gen space is not removed. And it's at some point is getting very close to max capacity. At some point, um, you will see, look at the CPU utilization as well. Remember, one of the symptoms you will see is excessive activity of garbage collection and high CPU when it's getting close to other memory. So let's see what's going to happen when it's getting very close to max capacity. So major collection, you see, is getting triggered often. So GC activity on the blue side is on the way up. Look at my CPU utilization now. CPU utilization of my machine now is, is pretty much maxed out, okay? Because the garbage collection is working excessively right now until the time that the GVM will exit without memory condition. So the Java Visual VM also stopped capturing anything, okay? And now the, the Java process is, is gone because the GVM terminated without memory condition. So if we go at the execution, you will see our program execution is now stopped. And we did get the exception, out of memory, of course, right here. And and actually, in this case, we got the permission space, of course, at the out of memory. And after that, everything will fail, right? So anything within the uh, program at itself will start to, to fail as well. So permission space ran out. And as we were mentioning uh, earlier, it's it's huge impact also on your CPU utilization when you're getting close to it. You will see GC activity will go up to the roof. It's trying to do non-stop GC. You see it was 20% of, of the time and CPU will go up as a side effect, okay? So now I'm going to show you the um, the parameter that I use, right? For the, the Java process. 
So in this case, the permission, as I mentioned, was 128 meg. And of course, I had verbo GC enabled, okay? Now let's have a look at the verbo G GC. So remember, we're monitoring Joshua VM, but another recommendation is to also enable verbo GC so you can keep track of the permgen space over time. Now the permgen is, is not cleaned up during the minor collection, right? So you need to look at the major collections. In this case, we're using the kind of a default parallel GC collector here, right? So you can see at some point full GC is triggered and look at the permgen space, right? It's getting very close to capacity. And at some point, full GC is getting triggered every second. Of course, if you have this situation in your production environment, this is very intrusive, right? It will degrade performance significantly, CPU utilization will spike up, of course. And at some point, the permgen is fully depleted, right? So the GVM, the hotspot GM is working very hard to try to clean the permgen, but the, since the memory is still referenced, it, it cannot clean it, right? And at some point, we're getting the final full GC attempt and the JVM will exit without a memory error. The verbal GC will also show you uh, near the end of a full breakdown of the heap at the time of the exit. In this case, we can see permgen, of course, is fully maxed out. Okay. Now, one more thing to mention is the um, we added also the verbose class, right, which is another recommendation to keep track of it. And this is very useful because it's going to show you the class loading, right? So in this case, we voluntarily right, create a program to create proxy class, right? It's exactly from a default URL class loader, right? Kind of a fictitious, let's say, class loader. We can say GM is loading constantly new proxy classes to the permission space. At some point, it was able to load about 32,000 or so, right, of classes. Same thing you can see from Javijal VM. Since we're talking about the class metadata leak, you'll be able to see the permgen, but the Javijal will also shoot a number of loaded classes. We can say our program keys are creating over 30,000 classes until it's running out of capacity with a 128 meg. Okay, so that's essentially it. That's what I wanted to show you. So again, this is a very simple program. I can make the source code available if you wish. It's always uh, good to learn on a simple Java program like this. So I recommend that you experiment also on your end. And of course, if you have, a, a, if you're working with a real application, please try to follow some of the uh, starting point recommendations. There are also always some other issues that you could face. But as I mentioned, keep in mind the most common uh, issues. And when you're suspecting a leak, making sure you, you're gathering all the the proper data and facts before you start playing around with the JVM tuning arguments. Okay? Alright, thank you for your time.